We are back here at the PMI Global Congress 2013 in New Orleans. And with me is Ricardo Viana Vargas. Hello, Ricardo. Hi. Hi, hi. Cornelius. How are you? I'm very well. Good. Thank you. How is the Congress going for you? Oh, yeah. Very well. Very well. It's, 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 for me, it's a great experience because the first Congress I attended was in 1998 in Long Beach. <laughs> and so far, 15 Congress in a row, and I have never missed it one so it's very nice and and now you you see people that you met 10 years ago and and it's a it's a great opportunity for me to right. meet people networking talk to people and also having the the great presentations we are having yeah. here yeah. and i did not attend last year and i don't recognize anybody anymore <laughs> <laughs> yeah it and, and it, it's it's interesting there is some core group that it's always here yeah. and and there is maybe a floating group that yeah. comes and goes and not not yeah. uh, comes and goes and or comes not so often oh. but it's, it's for me it's right. it's great so we are standing here in the middle of the exhibition hall and you will probably hear dear listeners in the background yes there are still people here there are still people drinking coffee being served exhibitors are showing off their wares and we are in the middle of this hustle and bustle and we want to talk about adopting the quadratic means process to quantify the qualitative risk analysis and yes when i read this for the first time i thought oh my god why did i ask ricardo to talk about this topic because it seems extremely complex to convey in an audio only podcast but luckily a friend of mine Josh Nankerville attended your presentation this morning and I can tell you he liked it so it was a good presentation you gave and he said you know it's not all that complex tell us about it Ricardo. yes yes uh, of course uh, uh, it's it's very hard to analyze things using the title so when I created this 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 concept I was concerned about how we can translate some qualitative into some numbers. And, and then it was very hard for me to, to put the title in the proper way. And, and the, the root of the concept is a, it's a way of doing the average of the, of the impact. So this is what became this title quite complex. But the concept behind is very, very simple. You can use an Excel spreadsheet and do it in 10 minutes, okay? okay. In 10 minutes. So yeah. there is no rocket science okay. behind this. Just as a reminder for me and the listeners, qualitative risk analysis, high, medium, low. Quantitative, you have a dollar value assigned to it, yes. right? And you yes. say, this will cost us this much. Yes, if yeah, that, 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 that's perfect. So let, let me uh, explain to you. Wh mm -hmm. What is the challenge when we use these both methods? Of course, when you think about quantitative risk analysis, you see a more deep analysis. You, you, you get into dollar value. You, you can have a more valuable approach. But the challenge is that it's much more complex to do it. Yes. Okay. It's much more complex to calculate the probability of things. Then you can run a simulation, you can run a Monte Carlo simulation, you can do, but this is very complex for the daily use of the project manager. So what I did, I, I took the concept behind the qualitative risk analysis and I translated it into a more quantitative. So uh, what I did, uh, instead of this basic concept of low, medium, high, what we did, we, we, we elaborate this a little bit more into basically three components, okay? One is the probability. Yes. The second one is what we call the impact. This mm -hmm. impact is divided not just in a big impact. For example, in the traditional uh, quant qualitative risk analysis, you have impact low, medium, high. Mm -hmm. But uh, is this impact in cost, in quality? In time, maybe it's Don't high in time, yes. yeah. but maybe low in cost. So what I did, I, I spread this into five different kind of impacts. Impact on time, impact on cost, impact on quality, mm -hmm, uh, impact mm -hmm. on quality, impact on safety and security, and other kinds of impacts. So instead of you evaluating one impact, you evaluate five of them. And then the third component is what we call proximity. <laughs> it means how close is this risk to happen or not happening? For example, you have a, let's suppose you have a risk of some supplies do not arrive. But then this, will, will, uh, this risk will become a problem or an issue next week or it will become nothing next week. 
uh, because it's it's in one week from now you know if the risk happened or right. not. Right, and after that, yes, is, yeah. after that is an issue. Okay, yeah. but you have other risks that you are, for example, building in a school, and you don't know if people will be using. But this is a long term. This is two years yes. from now. So it's a different approach. So these three components. So what we did, we translated this. So let me explain in a very basic way how how you do that. First, probability. You put a rank between one and five. Five means very high probability. Okay. Right. Uh, means. You ex almost expect this. This to is going to happen. Uh, it, it's uh, uh, yeah, almost, this is yeah. will be a hundred, but it's, yeah, yeah. it's 99 ninety nine percent, ninety five, okay. ninety eight percent, and and one means it's very very unlikely that this will happen. So it will be a very big surprise for us if, if this happens. happens. So yes. and, and this uh, so when you assess a risk, you give a score one, two, three, four, and five. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then the second step is the impact. And this is what the quadratic mean comes from. So the impact you need to evaluate. First, impact on time. For example, on that example on the paper, uh, okay, this is just an example. I said five, if this risk uh, can impact in more than six months of delay. For example. Okay, so if the impact happens on this risk, a five means our schedule will, will be delayed yeah, by five months. It will be a big months. damage uh, okay. by six months. Yeah. And, and one, it's 15 days. Okay. And look, this is just, again, it's just an example. You need, yes. you that is listening, this, you need to adjust because maybe for you, a five, it's three weeks, mm -hmm. uh, okay, and not uh, and maybe three days. So for us, in, in this case, we decided six months. Mm -hmm. Just an example. Right. Cost. Right. Cost. And, and this is also where you now deviate from the traditional qualitative because you've already said it's not just the impact is low, medium, high. You yes. said the impact on time is, the impact on cost is. Yes. And in the traditional qualitative, we don't actually distinguish in yes. these categories. Perfect. And okay. then cost, the same. Five, it's above a million, mm -hmm. and low, it's below a thousand. Quality, you do from one to five. If it's five, means uh, you, 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 have, you have a very strong probability of having, for example, uh, uh, a not acceptance right. on your delivery yeah, or a rejection. The yeah, yeah. yeah. And one, uh, it's Something that you perceive, and but the other people right. don't even perceive. For example, let me give you, and this is different. Let's suppose you have a project, and let's suppose that you have a risk that the project manager resigns mm -hmm. or leave the project. In some projects, this could be a dramatic impact on quality because the project manager is handling everything. For other projects, you have a quite stable process, and maybe the the donor or the client or. Uh, does even know who is the project manager because the pro so you need to understand this so this will be this third dimension the fourth one is security and and safety so for example uh, uh, in, in in many cases you have for example an issue on environmental or an issue in the security of the project safety and and then if it's a five it's something like a crisis if this risk happens for example let's suppose that you are uh, creating an hydroelectric power plant, and then there is an accident, and then the water drains down. This is a crisis. Oh, yeah. This is a major impact on safety. This could could blockage. So this is what we call the number five. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the number one, it's a very irrelevant impact. And then the other, the other is is a very different. The other is you can tailor this to what you need. For example, uh, uh, on when we talk on the on the United Nations Office of Project Services, that that I'm the head of the project management. For example, we have an agenda of improving gender, improving women on the project, right. improving community engagement. Is not only building something, but using national capacity, training them. So this order is another can be criteria. used can can be used right. to that. So, for example, you that are listening, you can tailor this. You can use this five, as I'm suggesting to you. You can use only three. You can create. But, but the model is what is important. Exactly. And then the last one is the proximity. Okay? If it's really, really short term, it's five. Why it's five? Because you need to 
take care immediately. You, you don't have time to think. Uh, and, and if you put one, means very long term. Okay, you don't need to take an action immediately. Mm -hmm. And you, you have a, next, uh, a question about y this, right? Yes, yes. Uh, actually, I have a question first for myself, and then I have the one from okay. Josh for you. Okay. So my question is this, proximity. Do you look at proximity only for the risk as a whole, or also in the various categories, like for proximity in terms of time, Oh, no, no. It's only time, of course. No, no it's the it's, event. It's, it's the, the event. event. When does when it happen? When the event ah, uh, okay. stop of being risk. Okay. Because risk is always a future event. Absolutely. So and, proximity and is, is not physical, as in how close is it to me in terms of distance, but in no, terms no, of time. time. It's always time. Okay. For, for example, let, let me give you a very uh, quick example. For example, uh, I have a risk that... If happens, it will happen tomorrow. Yes. So it's, it's something that it's very urgent. But I have some risks that if happen, they will happen in two years from now. Mm -hmm. So it's different. So And why is, uh, I, I decided to include this? Because time is very sensitive. But, yes. but not, not the time in terms of delay. Times in terms of delay, it's impact on time. Yeah. But this is time in terms of, of decision. You know, it will happen or not happen tomorrow or next month, or next year, okay. okay? Then when I take this, so look, I have seven numbers. I have a number for probability, mm -hmm. one to five. Five numbers for impact, one to five for each. Time, cost, quality, safety, and security, and order. Right, right. And one number for proximity. Mm -hmm. So now what I need, I need to calculate the full impact. And what is the full impact? Then comes to the formula. Of course. That looks strange, but it's not. So what do you do? You take this course, okay, and you take the square of the, the score. Mm -hmm. Then you add them, okay, including the proximity. Then you divide it by six, because six, six elements. You have six then numbers, you take yes. the square root. Yes. And it's very simple. So let's suppose one is three, one is two, uh, one is three, one is two, one is one, one is one, one is one, and proximity is four. Right. Yeah. So what do you do? Three to square. Plus two to square, plus one to square, plus one to square, plus one to square, plus four to square, divided by six square root. Square root of okay, that. Okay, this is on the example on the yes. paper. So and now, uh, now just for our listeners, this sounds very complicated when but you talk about it. But when you see it on paper, and I will have the link to Ricardo's white paper on the page. Go to page, uh, I believe it's page seven at the bottom. You'll see, yeah. you'll see the formula there. Yeah, it's very, it's very, very simple. And look, if if you have a spreadsheet, this takes. Uh, you, absolutely, it you, takes you put you it two in minutes there once to do that. and yeah. you have it. I yeah. mean, it is quite intuitive, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the one question I have for you, this is from Josh, who attended your presentation this morning, and he was wondering, when it comes to proximity, you know, you say, well, uh, if it's very long-term, you know, that's, that's a one, I guess, and it's immediate, that's the five. What if you don't know? What if it's something that could happen at any time? Yeah, if you don't know, it's five. Why? Okay. Because any time can be in 10 minutes. Okay. If it can be in 10 minutes, you need to be ready. Right. So it's immediate. Okay. So if you don't know and if you think, oh, it can happen in five minutes from now, then it's five. Okay. So it's the first time that the event will occur. Mm -hmm. So then you put the five. On. Have you applied this approach on any of your projects? Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. We, we are applying in several projects. And, and what is the idea of this? I truly believe that you need to keep it simple to make it work. Right. So maybe the title is very complex, but the process behind this is pretty much basic. Pretty much basic. So what we, we want is that if you have a spreadsheet, you can identify your risks and you can do this in a very quite simple way. And you can reach a final number that will help you. So we are doing this. Of course, it's not so simple because when we talk about risk management, it's above and beyond qualitative, quantitative. We are talking about the change in the cultural behavior of people. So, And, and also, uh, if you go back to the David Hilson book, Understanding and Managing the Risk Attitudes, yes. an amazing book about risk management, he always says this, people have different perceptions around risk. So for, for some people, there's no risk. For some people, there's all, everything is risky. So what we are trying to do, and we are applying this in several projects, is that 
this increase the awareness and bring some added value to the project manager while managing the project without adding a very complex process. Because it's not. So look, when you take this final number, the final impact, this uh, square root and this will be always a number between one and five. Then you multiply the probability. So if the probability is two of course. and the impact is two, the expected yeah, value is, is four. four. And, that, and then you put minus if it's a threat, plus if, if it's, it's an, an opportunity. opportunity yes. And then this is the great benefit. What do you do? You can add and calculate the final exposure of your project. Let's suppose my project has 10 threats and five opportunities. Mm -hmm. The opportunity will cancel the threat. You know, this is the basic and the root of the quantitative risk. Yes, it will cancel risk the risk threat numerically. It yeah, will numerically, not remove yes, the yes. threat, of course. Yeah, oh, no, yes. yeah, of course. The threat but, is still there. But for example, yeah. when you are calculating reserves. Yes. And then what you can do, you can create some green, yellow, and red flags. If the number is above this, is a red project. Right. The project, it's not red means it's bad, but it's very risky. Yeah. If it's a green, for example, and, and this is very good because... Uh, uh, when you have a very big opportunity, it will justify you to accept some threats, right? Yes. So it's the concept of cost-benefit. Okay. And we always only use the threats on when we are analyzing a project. Okay. Let me take a step completely okay. to the side here because you have your own project management-related podcast. I want to make sure that our listeners are aware of this. What is the podcast called? Yeah, How can they find it? It's 5 Minutes PM Podcast. Uh, it, uh, the, the, this, the, I, I decided to create this when I stopped giving classes because my lack of time. And I decided to share my thoughts about project management. So uh, I usually publish them weekly. It's uh, five minutes, around five minutes every week. I publish them in Brazilian, Portuguese and English. Uh, and, and it's available for free at my website is ricardo-vargas.com. So you can download, you can subscribe on iTunes. And, and if you like, you keep it. If you don't like, you just delete it. It's very, very <laughs> simple. And, and this was the intent of doing this. And it's just sharing. So every week I talk about different things and what I think, uh, opinions, events, and all, all related to project management. Okay, good. I have two more questions sure. to you in closing here. Sure. First of all, um, you work for the United Nations. That means, you know, we're talking about large projects. Is this approach more focused on large projects or any any project size? Uh, no, no, it's it's focused. And I, I let me tell you, at the United Nations, we not necessarily work with large projects in terms of size we work more with complex projects mm -hmm. and complex environmental projects. And then the environment where we do projects is quite complex because usually it's projects where the private sector is not working. So it's the challenge is not on the technical side, but more in how we structure the project, the country, the place where you do the projects. And, and look, all projects can benefit from this because look, only the title is complex. The content is very, very simple. It's almost obvious. So it's just a very basic mathematics. And why I use, I propose that the quadratic means and not the average. Why not taking them, sum and divide it by six and it's over? Because I, I, this is the tricky point of this paper, is that when you take the average, okay, mm -hmm. you are simplifying the process because that if you take the quadratic, we are considering also the variance. It means, let's suppose that I have a financial officer that takes care of money and a security officer that takes care of security. So for the security officer, a five on security is a very important project, right? Yes. Because it's very risky. But for the finance, it's not necessarily a five because in the cost, it's not so big, yes. you know? So when you have a five and a one, you increase the level of Absolutely, risk. Absolutely, if you make uh, comparing with with the uh, yeah comparing with the average. So this is the tricky point of this in the technical side that solved this problem. All right. So you can apply this in to everything. any project. Oh yeah, sure. Now let's talk about the application because that's my final question to you here. N many of our listeners they will probably have to take a quick look at your at your white paper to really understand how the this numbers, is done. Yeah. But then. Once they are convinced that this works, and, and frankly, after our conversation here, I, I am convinced this works on, on so many projects. 
What do you suggest they should do? What are the steps that they okay. should take perfect. in order to implement yeah. this on their project tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, perfect. First, uh, forget the complexity because it's not. So just first, take an Excel spreadsheet and just put the formulas there and create the fields and everything. So then you forget the, the, all the mathematical piece of that. Then you need to start applying. So choose a project, choose a pilot. Identify the projects and try as a group because risk management is a teamwork. As a group, try to start playing on this. Try, try, try to start uh, assessing these values right. and try to use. Don't start with a very complex project. You start with a project that you have a little bit of control mm -hmm. because then you can, because if the project is very complex and the two is new, then you'll be in trouble. So let's try to use in a project where you know more and then you apply just to see if the results are reasonable or not. Then you start to spread. It's a very, very simple project, a process. And uh, what I suggest is do this with a group. Don't do this alone you, uh, you, because people have different perceptions of this. But it's very simple. You can implement right. very easily. I think the most complex uh, hurdle that our listeners are going to have to take is how do I convert this into the formula in my spreadsheet? Oh, yes. That is just one cell, probably two yeah. cells that they have to do. And once you have that in two cells, yeah. you can copy-paste and, you, yeah, and, and then And then you you're have done. a template and you are exactly. done. Exactly. And, and yeah. look, what, it's because really of this, that in the white paper, I put an example with the numbers. Yes. I put an example with the numbers. So then you cannot mix because if you want to test if it's working just put the right the <laughs> same numbers and the result it's yeah, if your result very, is the same as in look, the white it's paper it's very yeah. very basic it's very very simple right. and very easy to yeah do. i'm a convert i have <laughs> to admit okay. again when i first read about it i thought this is going to be very complex when i talked to josh just now over lunch he explained to me you know this is extremely simple it's a <laughs> middle of the road approach this is going to work for us he works at a large consumer electronics yeah. company and he said this is is going to work for us in our PMO. We can use this. So if and you can tailor, yes. you can tailor. Yeah. Okay, this is not something that you must follow. This is just I'm just sharing the ideas that we apply. We apply it, but if you want, okay, I want to create a six dimension. You can do it. Right. You know, it's it's just the tool that that is very that easy for given. you to. So use. if your goal is to improve your risk management approach and give it a more of a process rather than just saying, oh, this is a low medium or high risk, then this approach may work for you. Ricardo, thank you very much for having me. Thank you, Cornelius. Thank you very much. Okay, Appreciate see you next it. time.